Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn some HSRP advanced topics, including priority and preemption, and a way that we can get load balancing with HSRP. So I'll start off with priority and preemption. You can choose which router will be the active by setting priority on the routers when you do the configuration. The router with the higher priority will be preferred. If you don't set a priority, it will default to 100. In the event of a tie, the highest IP address wins. If preemption is also enabled, when a higher priority router comes back online after a failure, it will transition back to active. So say for example, we've got our HSRP routers R1 and R2, and we give R1 a higher priority, and we also enable preemption on there. Well, if R1 fails, R2 will take over and become active. When R1 comes back up again, if we've enabled preemption, then R1 will transition back to active. If we haven't enabled preemption, so maybe we've just enabled priority, but we haven't enabled preemption, in that case, then R2 will remain the active router. R1 will not come back online as active again. And if you don't enable preemption, that can be more stable. Because say that R1 has got some kind of intermittent issue where it's flapping up and down. So it's coming up, going down, coming up, going down. Well, if you've enabled priority and preemption, the active is going to go to R1, then R2, then R1, then R2. There's going to be a short outage each time that happens. So often it's a better idea not to enable preemption. For configuring this, so on R1, this is going to be our preferred router. We do our normal HSRP configuration first. So on interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1, we've got the standard interface configuration with the IP address 10.10.10.2 and no shutdown. We then have our HSRP command, standby 1 IP 10.10.10.1, and then the additional commands for priority and preemption, standby 1 priority 110, and standby 1 preempt. On R2, we have the normal interface configuration where we're giving an IP address 10.10.10.3 and no shutdown. Standby 1 IP 10.10.10.1, the same virtual IP address that we have on R1. And on R2, we've said standby 1 priority 90. The default priority is 100. So here, R1 will be preferred because the higher value is better. We have enabled preemption here. If we hadn't put in that command on R1, standby 1 preempt, then R1 would be preferred when both routers come up at the same time. But if R1 fails over to R2, when R1 comes back again, it would remain R2 being active. Okay, so that's priority and preemption. Another thing that we can configure is the version. HSRP version 2 introduced a few minor improvements. So in real world, you'll often see people still running on version 1, and the default is version 1. Both routers must be running the same version. So if you do enable version 2, make sure that you enable it on both routers. The configuration for the version is just one additional command, standby version 2. Now for verifying these commands, it's the normal command to verify HSRP, show standby. I'll come out of full screen mode again to highlight some of these for you. Okay, so we can see that group one is active, virtual IP is 10.10.10.1. We can see the MAC address for the virtual MAC address there as well. So we covered all that in the last lecture. The new settings here, I can see that preemption is enabled 
and the active router is local because on here the priority is 110. On the standby router, which is at R2 at 10.10.10.3, the priority is 90. So whenever R1 is up, it will be the active router. Okay, so I do have one other slide to show you here. So this is about how we can get active, active HSRP. Now, for the same IP subnet, it's always going to be active standby. But if you've got different IP subnets on the inside, we're gonna have different VLANs there as well, then for your, say our two routers are R1 and R2, you can have R1 active for one IP subnet and R2 active for a different IP subnet. Or if you had four IP subnets, you could have two on each. So the example here, let's say that our engineering PCs are in the 10.10.10 .10 subnet and our sales PCs are in the 10.10.20.0 slash 24 subnet. So here I'm gonna have my engineering PCs are gonna be sending their traffic through R1 my sales PCs are going to be sending their traffic through R2. And this also shows you an example of where you would want to use priority and preemption. So on R1, I configure it on interface gig 0 slash 1 with IP address 10.10.10.2, no shutdown, standby 1 IP 10.10.10.1, and I give it priority 110 and preempt. On R2 for the 10.10.10 .10 subnet, it's got physical address 10.10.10.3, no shutdown, standby I one IP 10.10.10.1, and standby one priority 90. So R1 is gonna be the preferred default gateway at 10.10.10.1 for my engineering PCs. For my sales PCs, I flip it around. So on R2, I give it IP address 10.10.20.3 on the physical interface. The virtual IP is 10.10.20.1 and R2 gets a higher priority 110 in preemption. On R1, it's got priority 90. So you can see here that R1 will be active for my engineering PCs. R2 will be active for my sales PCs. So that's a way that you can get load balancing through both gateways when you're using HSRP. But it's only gonna work when you do it across different IP subnets. For the same IP subnet, it's gonna be active standby. Okay, so that was everything for HSRP for the CCNA. See you in the next section. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.